Hello, I'm Simon Hope, and um, thanks for watching this short video on how to use the Easy Set uh, threading jig. Uh, I'm going to show you the basic one first of all, uh, and if you continue watching, I'll then go on to uh, using the hinge plate, which is an extra, and I'll show you the advantages of that. So this is the the basic jig um, out of the box. Um, I've screwed the stem in. Um, first thing we need to do is actually get the the centre height correct, so um, it's got a dimple at the back, you just take that up and use the tail stock just to get that on the centre height there, um, and then we'll just adjust the collar and set that, and once that's been done um, the jig will just pop in and out at the correct setting. Um, when you first bite and screw the stem in, um, you do need to screw the stem tight, and that's just through the setting on there. Um, and while we're here, I'll just show you how to change the spindles if you ever um, buy a different size spindle. And that's simply done by undoing the handle at the back, taking the adjustment ring off, uh, removing that grub screw, and then the part just comes out. And then you can change if you buy, for instance, a 12 TPI, that's how you change it. Um, the important thing with these is that all the tensions preset uh, when you purchase them. Um, through this bit here. So when you pop them in and out, you don't have to reset and adjust to use it. So that's the, the jig basically set up. Um, we'll get a bit of wood on the lathe um, and then we'll, uh, we'll cut some threads. So what we've got here is a bit of sycamore mounted up and if I was making a threaded box or an item I'd always do the female thread first because I find it easier to match the male up to the female. So if this was a box, this would be the inside of a lid. Um, I'm going to use my little 6mm carbide tool. Um, it's just what I prefer to use, but whatever means you've got to get in there to take out. Uh, we need to hollow that out, leave a nice parallel edge to cut the threads, um, and then I'm going to run some super glue on the edge just to harden the timber in order to actually cut a thread on the sycamore. So we'll get the lathe fired up. I'm going around about 3,300 RPM. Um, I'm going to start just by cleaning up this edge here. So a nice little bit of shear scraping. And then we'll cut in. The thing I like about this tool is that I can actually do a nice finishing cut across the bottom by shear scraping or shear cutting and actually run into the corner. So if I go into the corner, it produces a nice clean undercut that the threading tool can go into uh, without the danger of hitting the bottom of the box. So what I'm going to do is just to make sure this is nice and clean on this edge and make sure it's parallel. So we'll just clean that up, put a little chamfer on that edge, and then I'll just show you a little trick to check whether or not it's parallel. I'm going to use an Allen key, and what I like to do is just use the flat of an Allen key, just get your finger in there like that, and you can actually see by looking down just how accurate you've been in cutting that parallel. Now it's out slightly, I need to just make a little bit of adjustment at the back there. So let me just do that quickly. Just blow the dust out. Double check for our parallel. Yeah, that's spot on. So I'm just going to run some thin cyanacrylate glue just in on this part here. This will soak in and harden uh, and just prevent the tips from breaking out. So normally sycamore would be a timber you wouldn't normally um, associate with threading um, but with the jig and the fact that I'm hardening the surface with the, the glue it allows the timber to actually take quite a nice thread. So I'll just activate that off and we'll transform that now onto the jig and then we'll show the actual cutting of the threads. So there's a couple of uh, ways of actually mounting up the cutter. Um, I've got a spare chuck, so you could use that. You could just use a standard chuck and just take the jaws off and just use the carriers. Um, this is my axe mincer with the 
engineering jaws which are quite nice so you could hold the cutter which has a 10mm shaft like so um, or you could use the two Morse taper cutter holder we'll use this a bit later on we'll use this for now um, but this also works nicely and it just is an optional extra um, for those who just don't have sort of spare chucks and it just saves taking jaws off and stuff like that so we'll use that for this um, demonstration just make sure that that's on there correctly so what we're going to do is we're just going to mount this up onto the jig so I'll just wind it on like so just give it a bit of a snap to make sure it's on there proper and then what I like to do or what it needs is to have a, a sort of fingers gap here and a gap at this point um, we'll talk about the click system and how it moves in and out when we get to that bit um, but initially you need a gap here and a gap here so I'm just going to okay, get it so into position what we need to do is to um, actually get this parallel so it takes a couple of times to get used to it you know but um, I actually find it reasonably easy um, I just get the cutter on the inside edge and then I just sort of pivot and just look down at the chuck so I'm looking at the top of the chuck here to the bed bars um, to make sure that it's parallel so when you're happy that it is um, just lock everything off make sure everything's fully locked off you don't want anything moving and then the reason we have the gap here and the gap here is that we can come fully out of the way so we can actually start the cut off and actually blend it in um, a bit at, bit at a time until we actually do the what's called the kiss test where the cutter is just touching the bit of wood so I'm going to get it to that point now so we're going to fire the lathe up I'm going to run it fast fast as the lathe can go actually for this small cutter so around about 3500 and then what I'm going to do is a series of back and forth so I'm going to go in and I'm just going to click forward just do a click at a time or two to get it in so it's just touching the timber yep so it's just touching now we'll just stop for a second um, so that's zero now <clears throat> for all my spindles there's um, a certain amount of clicks needed to go to the the correct depth so for instance the 20 TPI requires three clicks and it's built into the handle little click system you'll see it as I'm using it so 20 TPI is three clicks and that's to thread depth um, this is 16 TPI which I sort of supply as standard it's the sort of run-of-the-mill thread that most people would like to use for their boxes etc and that's five clicks so now that we've got to our sort of zero setting what I'm actually going to do I'm going to go four clicks and do most of the work and then we'll do a final click as a finishing cut and I'll look at the timber at that point and decide whether it actually needs a little bit more super glue so listening you might be able to hear it click we're going to go one two three four lock the handle off and we're going to cut all the way in and back out again so we're going to cut into our gap so we can hear it stop cutting and we're just simply going to come back out again we're going to stop and have a look. Now because I'm using sycamore, which I know is a soft timber, this is the opportunity now just to run a little bit more super glue in. So what I would do is actually just run a little bit of thin into the grooves, let it run round. And because we've already cut sort of into the timber, yeah, that will soak in and harden everything up in order for us to do our final finishing cut. Remember we've only done four, we need to do five to go to thread depth. So I'll just activate that off. Yep, release the handle, click, tighten the handle and we'll do our final cut. into the gap, we'll come back out again and I'll just turn that around so you can see we've cut the perfect thread. 
Okay, so uh, we need to make this bit fit uh, the lid. We'll talk about that process. What I'm going to do is just make a nice finishing cut down there just to get rid of any previous marks, um, especially if you use a parting tool, that can leave quite a rough surface. So we always make sure I clean that first. So glass is on, and then we'll just run a bowl gouge down the surface just to get that nice and clean. And then what I'm going to do is use some digital verniers to actually uh, work out my offset. Now what I do is get those in on the inside. Um, it's important that you actually wobble it across the, um, the surface there to get the maximum diameter. It's, it's very easy just to go in like that and you think you've got it and it's not. So you have to sort of wobble it to make sure you've got the maximum diameter. Um, we'll carefully take that out and then we'll add our offset. So what I do is um, press zero, uh, and for 16 TPI, it's uh, 1.1 uh, offset. So we simply, on zero, add our 1.1. So uh, it's different for the different thread pitches. So for instance, if it was 14 TPI, um, it would register, you'd need to register um, about a 1.6 offset. So it's 1.07, 1.13, 1 1.08, so that's close enough. So we'll just lock everything off and put our marking onto there. Now I'll just say very quickly, um, I'm gonna use the vernis to actually mark on the wood, um, but be very careful if you haven't tried this before. We're gonna point slightly downhill. We're gonna mark the wood with the left-hand side until it meets up with the right-hand side. Um, but if you actually catch the wood on the right-hand side, this could flick up towards you. So be very careful if you're trying this for the first time. Um, but it is a very quick and accurate way of transferring sizes. So let's get that bit done. So that's my mark there. And then we'll just turn this round and cut the spigot. So I'm just going to go in with a parting tool. Now a little trick, what I do is put a little chamfer on the front edge and then I just run the verniers back on that chamfer. And what that actually does is centralise up and give you a final marking. I can just about see it, you know, where to go to. So it's just like a fine tuning um, trick. So that's the right size. We do need a groove at the back. So I'm going to use my thin parting tool. Make sure you've got a little chamfer at the front. And I just take the sharp edge off the back. And that's now set to put some super glue on. Okay, so I'm going to use some thin cyanacrylate glue again, and um, I'll just use the bond lock, I find that works really well, but whatever you know you normally use. Um, definitely use the thin, because that sort of soaks in to the timber. And um, we'll just get some tissue on there, just to take the surface amount off, and just activate it. Um, and that's ready for cutting the thread. I'm not actually going to complete the whole box and hollow out, um, we're just going to make the two parts thread just to show you um, how it all works. So um, I'm going to take this off, put it on the jig, mount the cutter up and then we'll show you the cutting. Okay, so I've mounted the cutter up, uh, I've put the chuck onto the threading jig. Um, make sure you've got your finger gap here and again make sure you've got about 10mm gap on that part. Um, and then we're going to take it up to the cutter and what I actually do is rest it on the the part there and actually pivot until I see that it's parallel. Now you might mark the wood but that's the bit you're actually going to cut into so it doesn't really matter. So we're into there and we're parallel there so lock everything down and this is again the reason why we have these gaps here because we can come out of the way. Uh, we'll fire that up and we'll do the kiss test and then we'll count off our clicks. So we'll take it in slowly, I'll maybe do a couple of clicks to get it close and then I'll do one at a time and just take it in 
until we get our kiss test. One more. Yep, so it's just touching the wood. I can just see it cutting the wood. So we're going to do our four clicks initially. One, two, three, four. And we're going to cut into the groove and just stop short. Now this, um, this version 2 model, um, which is what's available now, has this depth stop on the back. And what this allows you to do is we can set that. It won't damage the threads, there's a brass tipped rub screw in there. But now each time we come to that point, it will always stop so it doesn't hit the shoulder. We'll come out and we'll just run some super glue in there before we do our final cut. So just very, very gently, carefully, just run a little bit of thin into the timber, into the grooves, like so. On harder timbers, you wouldn't need to do this, of course. It's just on the softer timbers, you know, sycamore, ash, um, yeah, timbers like that that you'd have to just run this extra little bit of super glue into. Um, so we've got that, we've done our four clicks, uh, we need five clicks to go to our thread depth, so we'll just do our final click and we'll get that cut. Into there, we can stop, we'll just come out, We've gone to depth. We'll yep, so um, yeah, just add a little bit more wax on that. Yeah, so what I like to try and aim for um, is a loose thread. Um, and when you put the wax on, you can actually see that spinning. Yeah, and that's what I like to try and aim for. So if you make it to exactly the right offset and do the clicks, this is what you'll be able to produce a lovely thread. Okay, what I'm going to actually do now is show the, the hinge plate in operation. So I've made another male thread. I haven't actually cut the, the threads yet. We'll show that uh, and the advantage of actually having the hinge plate. Um, I'm also going to show the uh, Morse taper cutter holder. Um, so it's a stainless steel, two Morse taper. Um, we'll melt that in. It does have a draw bar, which is really important because we don't want that to vibrate loose. So I'll just get that mounted up. And the other really important thing, you might not see it in the camera, I don't know, um, but make sure you don't have um, too much threaded bar sticking out the end. So I say a maximum of three inches. If it's any longer than as it's spinning, that can actually start to whip and actually bend the threaded rod. So that's important. If you buy one of these, you might have to cut it down to length. So that will mount onto there as normal. We still need our gaps here and here as normal. We'll take it down to the cutter and then we'll zoom in and actually show the next sort of operation. Okay, so I've made sure that that's parallel and I've done the normal thing there. Um, we'll come out of the way and we'll do our kiss test. Now, because I've got the hinge plate, what I've actually done, I've done the offset 1.15. So I've deliberately made it slightly bigger so I can show you a little tip to actually take it down to exactly the right thread that you'd want for wooden threads. You just get a little bit more control um, with the hinge plate, which I'll show. So we'll do the kiss test, we'll fire that up. Again, fast speeds, as fast as the, the lathe will go, really. And we'll just take that down. One more, hopefully. The yep, so just started to cut, so that's our zero. We'll do four. One, two, three, four. We'll come into our gap, and I'll just set the, the depth stop up. Like so, and we'll come out. Now the advantage of having the hinge plate from this bit is straight away we can now come up 
and actually add our super glue onto there. So that's one advantage that we're not working close down to the, the cutter. So we'll just drop our super glue into the threads like so. Or we'll just use a little bit of tissue and activate that off. We'll come fully back that way, or you could go all the way to the stop, but we'll come just clear. Um, and the hinge plate's very accurately made, so once that clicks in, that is exactly back to the position that it was. So we can do our final click, yeah. do our finishing cut, And then we can come out the way to actually check our thread. Now you'll see, because I've done it slightly um, bigger, it's just slightly tight. So what we can do is use a bit of abrasive. Yeah, and what I do is just run that on the, the tips and just sand the tips down. blow that out and we can go back down just do another click yeah so we've taken the tips off we now need to make the valleys just a bit deeper Just a little bit too tight. One more click. And that allows us to get our threads exactly the way we want them. And you can see now, we move that over, we've got that perfect thread that spins when you go on. You need that because if there's a bit of movement in the wood, um, the threads will lock in. So you do need that bit of movement. And with the hinge plate, it just allows you uh, more control uh, to obtain that. Thank you for watching this um, small video on how to use the Easy Set threading jig. Um, I'm going to do another little separate video just on a few tips, but um, um, if they don't answer your questions, please just drop us an email, um, the details will follow, um, but thank you very much.